All right, welcome back to the Charged Up Show. We're uh, we're officially a podcast now. We just got a license. We're on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. It's awesome. All right, so we're gonna start off a little intro. Matt's gonna do an intro. To yeah, our we, we got my boy Ben McFarlane, Guelph Storm. Uh, went to school with him for a couple of years. He's a big beauty. <laughs> Played for the Red Hawks a sixteen year old year. Went to the Guelph Storm, and we're just gonna talk. Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's start like right at the beginning of your your career. Let's do a little career recap. All right. Well, I start. I live in Air. I don't know if anyone knows where that is, but um, yeah, basically it's like a small town just near Cambridge. So I played uh, my first two years there in novice, I think, and then uh, moved to Cambridge. I played AAA growing up uh, with Scott Walker. I'm sure we'll get into some stories. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, and then I uh, went to Red Hawks, wanted to stay close. It was best option. And then during that year, I played a couple games of Guelph and then got called up for the rest of the year after I finished with Red Hawks. And then this year, finished with Guelph. Nice. Yeah. Right. A, lot, a, lot, a lot shorter than Johnny, Johnny P's. Intro. Yeah, that was That's cool. for sure. <laughs> a lot better. <laughs> All right, so we have like our – jumping in the first question, we have like what are your goals – your next goals coming up, like, because you you made it to the OHL, like, that's a pretty big accomplishment. So what's 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 next on the line? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Like this year was just a tough year for me, moving away from home for the first time, and uh, just like the jump from junior to OHL is just crazy. Like I didn't yeah. think it was going to be that big, but the speed and the strength is ridiculous. So it was a tough year for me. I didn't get too many points, and but I felt like got better as the year went on, but. Um, next year is going to be big to see, like, we we'll hopefully get some looks from some NHL teams, maybe get, like, a invite to camp or something like that. But uh, if that doesn't work out, then, I don't know, I'll go play school somewhere, like BC or something like that. So there's a lot of paths still open, so just hoping mm-hmm. for the best. Are, are you the type of guy that would go to Europe if you had, like, the chance? Yeah, for sure. I love Europe. Like, sk- yeah. be there, and, yeah, it'd be fun. Like, well, that there's a lot like- of leagues there, so... You yeah, and, like, through. they've never watched you, but, like, right, you're a small, speedier guy, and that's, like, a skill yeah. guy, right? That's, like, oh, but you yeah. work hard, but, like, you almost think, like, you'd be even better in Europe. Yeah. It's but hard to tell. It, you know. it all probably will, have like, depend on what, like, the next two years. Yeah, right. for sure. It'll yeah. still be draft years, so I'll see what happens. Yeah, so we'll start right in, right in uh, minor hockey with, with Scott Walker. <laughs> <laughs> How many years did he coach you? Uh, so I played Cambridge for eight. He coached seven. Jeez. Wait, before we get in, let's let's just tell everyone who Scott Walker is, just because they probably don't know. <laughs> yeah, give us a recap, yeah. Ben. Okay, so basically, Scotty played in the NHL for 15 years on, I think, like three different teams or something like that. He's, like, coached the World Juniors, coached the Olympics. Uh, he's, he has so many medals, so many awards. It's just ridiculous. And he was a tough guy, too, so. Yeah. <laughs> He was smaller too, which he was. I think he was only like five nine, five ten, but guy was just crazy. Animal. <laughs> yeah. What do you like? How how impactful do you think that was? Oh, like to have him. He's probably like one of the best coaches I'll ever have in my life, and biggest influence for me. Like that's why like I wanted to go to Guelph for sure because I knew he would still be involved and always he'll be looking out for me. Mm-hmm. But just like the way he taught, like most coaches don't care that much about their players as much as he did like he really got emotionally involved and just wanted like all of us to get better so he like he was hard on us obviously but in the end it works out like he would bag skate us and he just made us more disciplined and like taught us the right way how to play hockey yeah well yeah if you look at his career man like yeah he had like over he had 300 penalty minutes the one year (laughs) yeah like he had (laughs) seasons and seasons of 100 uh, over 100 penalties that's that's just crazy (laughs) In, after this, you guys should look up fights. So, yeah, I like, will. I so haven't fun. done that yet. The one he's got like blood pouring down his face. He's like throwing the ref out his way to go back at the guy. Oh, <laughs> you got you got any good stories of him coaching you guys? Like just losing it at you or what? Yeah. So we played a. <laughs> it was a select tournament. This is like the main one. I always tell people we were playing in the select tournament in Philly. And it was, I think it was just me, Coop. This is spring hockey, right? Yeah, it was spring hockey. Yeah, okay. Like, it was like 
serious, but it wasn't like yeah, it's like, it's a big spring hockey tournament. Yeah, it's just spring hockey, so like it wasn't like life or death. And I we were playing some Germany team, and we were winning like eight nothing. So then I guess the Germany coach told their players to start running us, like trying to cheap shot us and shit. So Scott like figured this out, and he was standing on the boards like there's like the boards penalty box he was standing in between those yelling at the other coach <laughs> no way. so then he chucks his marker across the boards like hits him and he's like pointing to him i guess the coach didn't know english he's pointing to him, and <laughs> him to meet him around the other side of the rink so they can go at it and like the ref's like sitting there he's like if you don't calm down i'm calling the cops they're gonna be here they're gonna arrest you and shit and i'm just like what the fuck is going on right <laughs> it's, and most of the kids don't even know him right yeah and like <laughs> that was like the first like spring tournament where the guys like on my team they're like from alliance and shit and they're like jesus christ this guy's crazy <laughs> this guy's coaching like, for seven years yeah i was like and you would yell and scream and oh i think coop took it the worst for sure his son and yeah, Cooper Walker and plays for the yeah. with Benny too, for everyone who doesn't yeah. know. He would get it the worst from him, obviously, but in the end, like oh like every like growing up in the Lions, like no ref would talk shit to him at all. Like oh, they, really? all, they all knew who he was, so they just leave him alone. Like I think like in the seven years he coached, he got maybe one technical and he was yelling at the rest every game. They were just too <laughs> I remember watching you guys in playoffs and just I saw him just giving it to the refs and I'm like, what the heck? How are they not getting a penalty? I yeah. actually remember this vividly. That's, that's yeah. hilarious. So he would tell them how fat they are and go eat their like, <laughs> or like or after the game, you can sign a hockey card for them for their kids. <laughs> <laughs> it just showed how like, much he cared about us. Like He wouldn't let anyone do anything to us. Like Even the players, like if they were starting to get super dirty, then he would... He'd feel like he had to protect us, which was nice. Yeah, like, right. So is he in Guelph now? Like, is he still with the he's Storm? A part, just... He's a part owner. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he, he'll come to most of the games, but he's with uh, Arizona, I think. Forget what he's doing there. I'll search it up. Yeah, I think he's some with Arizona, so he's he's pretty busy, like, you know, traveling and that. But Right, yeah. I think, like, a lot of athletes have a – a love-hate relationship with a lot of their coaches. Do you have that kind of thing with him too? Uh, at points, obviously, like when I growing up, him screaming in your ear, it was tough to like to block out like all like the negativity and try and like think of something from what he said that's positive. Yeah, but in the end, like he, I, in the end, I knew he cared about me and he wanted the best for me. So, it, and that's it was like... love hate, but in the end, it's I, I'm so happy I like got to be able to coach by him yeah you know exactly like a lot of coaches at the time when it's happening you you kind of hate them or like like why is like this guy sucks in a way but like when you're all done and when you're done the season and all that you really think back and like wow it's there's a big impact that you didn't see so yeah especially like the bag skating like i didn't i hated it while we went through it but i didn't realize how much it would help us like Hmm. like we were when we were going up cambridge we were never good like we would lose i think for the first four years we like would be at the bottom of the pile every year and like barely make playoffs but then um major bantam we like swept the lions finals so we went all year doing pretty good and then we just turned it up and it just showed like because we weren't that skilled but we were just like in incredible shape and we just kept going you just, just worked harder yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's well, then next season, the next season we lost we only lost two games like the whole year but then we shit the bed in the playoffs but yeah, yeah i remember that game i was there yeah. a lot of people there you guys choked pretty hard oh yeah we choked. You almost hard. choked for, uh, in the first round too i know yeah <laughs> that, was, walks, that was fun yeah walks was gone that whole playoffs yeah i remember that right it yeah, wasn't he at the was, olympics or something yeah he was coaching olympics so it was like that's yeah. crazy like yeah. your coach is gone at the olympics yeah it was I was really happy for him though, to get that opportunity. As much yeah, as yeah, obviously, but it's pretty sick. Like, <laughs> got coached Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's actually he's the special assistant to the GM. Is his job title right now? Special assistant. To the GM. I don't know what that entitles. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm sure you, I'm sure we can figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he yeah he was there a lot here actually though. Yeah, that's good. Well, he's working with Vancouver at the time, I think, too, right? Yeah. Or is that, what did that come after? 
He was with Vancouver, and then he went to Arizona. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's cool. What are like, pretty cool guy to know? Yeah, what are some of the challenges? I think we'll just like jump kind of right into a little of the OHL. But like, what are cool. like what are some of the challenges you face trying to make the OHL and like even jumping in because you like you kind of went right under before anything. Yeah, happened. I think biggest thing like challenge is politics. Yeah. Like, growing yeah. up, everyone heard, like, you have to be on the best team. You have to be, like, have the most points in that. And I think just blocking that out was probably the biggest thing. And, like, just if I could go back now and give myself advice, I'd just say, like, don't focus on the points so much. Just focus on, like, playing. Like, you're only going to be able to play hockey for a little part of your life. Like, just enjoy it rather than worrying about how many points you get or what round you're going to go. Like, it really doesn't matter what round you're going to go. Yeah. No, that's true. Like last year, last year when I was called up, I was playing with Dursey. He was drafted 12th round to the OHL, played OHL, and then drafted to the show, and now he signed a show contract. Like it just shows you, it really doesn't matter what round you go. Like right, right. yeah, it's just yeah. I remember, you know, I remember Ash Patel saying that, like when he was like, "What do you think Dursey did after getting his contract?" Yeah, and you're like, he probably went and worked out right after. Like yeah. Yeah. Depends what you, it all matters what you do with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now how yeah, many, you went to Victus, probably. right? How many years did you go to Victus for? I was there from grade nine to 11. And then when okay. I moved to Guelph this year, I had to go to Guelph school. Right. But I loved it. Like, I bet you that was, that's like one of the main reasons I probably made it to the OHL. Like, all these yeah. younger guys, they're like just going through like the season and they think it's enough when really it's not like, when you're with your teams, you're not really, especially like minor midget and lower, you're not going to get that time to do all the skill work that you would. Mm-hmm. And the guys there, like the Alice's, they're awesome. So I just think that extra skill work will like help me put it into my game. For sure, yeah. And then talking about you did earlier, like how hard was it moving away and jumping into a harder level at the same point when you're like, yeah. you might be struggling? Yeah, so like for me, I can't say it was, it was hard, but it wasn't as hard as like other people. Like, because it's Guelph, so it's like 35 minutes for me. Yeah. So I could, I could still come home and see my parents and that. But I think just the hardest part was just like transferring schools, new school, uh, moving away with the billets, then also trying to focus on hockey. Like <clears throat> the days get long when you're in school all day and then you're going to the rink and from right from school. And then you like, so I'd leave at like I'd school at nine, I'd get home at like 5.30. Yeah, that's uh, so, a long day. day. Yeah. But I don't know, like, it, it took a little bit to get used to, but obviously I'm, like, well, the freedom's pretty nice moving away also, but sure. I don't know. I think it's are just you, a good experience. Are you allowed to go home? When, like, if you have a, if you have nothing at night, can you, like, go home if you want to? Or, like, do yeah, this so at, we, we you get, have to stay there? We get four mandated off days during the month. So, like, whether it's, like, a Monday or Sunday or something, I don't know. But, um, yeah, you just text coach, and he'll usually let you just go home for the day. Yeah, like, after practice or whatever, you're allowed to drive home yeah. or whatever. Usually we yeah. get him on uh, Sundays, so I'd usually have all Sunday to go home. Nice. It's a lot of travel, though, too. So That's like, pretty good. Yeah. I, I know, like, yeah. a few people who do the billet family thing, and it's, like, they, they, a lot of them love it, but it, it gets tough after a while too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I feel like you just got to find the right ones. Like I got, I have a 10 year old billet brother and like most people or most of my guys don't really like younger billet brothers, but he's awesome. Like it's kind of nice to have like a younger brother just to fool around with every once in a while. Like mm-hmm. hey, your life's so serious that so you need a little fun every once in a while. So yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's perfect. Sure. Do yeah. you have anyone else on the team that lives with you? No, I was alone. I'm like the farthest out you could get to. So it's like a it's a decent far drive for me every morning, but it's all right. I love my billet family, so it's good. And we got a story that Ash Patel told the guys at Victus. Ash Patel's a mental psych guy. Yeah. About, I think it was Ratcliffe. Is this true? I think I mean, he said in camp and Ratcliffe was giving it to you in the back or something like that. For you guys, I I don't know if it was Ratcliffe for sure. But I, this is how I remember it, and he was giving it to you, and you didn't know who it was, and you just turned around and cross checked him in the teeth. Oh no, <laughs> was it? it wasn't Ratcliffe. It was Hand. Oh, okay, you know Handley. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I came into camp, 
And yeah, tell the details. Like you're your first year. <laughs> yeah, so it was my first year. So I didn't know anyone like in the league. Cause, like I watched I watched a couple of OHL games like the year before, but I never really like I wouldn't know like pick out someone and exactly know them. So then I guess I went into camp and I wasn't like my games like hitting and playing hard, and I wasn't hitting like because I didn't know who was who like who was on the team. If like there was no one hitting. So then George comes down, like my coach in the intermission and said like, Hey, like, what are you doing? Like, start playing your game. Like, um, you haven't made the team yet. Like, what do you, like, you got to play to win. I was like, all right. So like the first guy I go hit like pretty hard is a fifth year away. (laughs) And he's like huge. Like he's a big boy. So I hit him and then he cross checks me like a bit later so I turn around and cross check him, and then we were like face washing each other and shit. <laughs> and then he's like, "Who the fuck are you? I own this league." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, that's a good point. Like, I I didn't realize you were fifth year." So I got back to the bench, and one of the, I think it was Stevenson. He's like, "You you know that guy's fifth year away this year, right?" I was like, "Shit, all right." <laughs> so, yeah, but pretty- he was. Ash was saying, like, they liked you for that. Like, I'm sure that yeah, was Yeah, that was probably one of the main reasons why they actually signed me that year because I just said, even though I didn't know it, I, they probably just said, like, oh, he went after the biggest guy. Like, Yeah, he uh, didn't care who he was. They probably thought you knew who he was. Yeah, <laughs> so they were like, yeah, probably like, this guy fucked. He just hit a fifth year away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a funny story. Yeah, me and Hanley were probably the closest going through the year after that. Like, we were, like, best friends. Oh. That's a cool story. How, like, kind of comes back like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So awesome. it, was, it worked out. Mm-hmm. But then, like, throughout the year, we could suck if you would, like, like make you your... Yeah. You know, and then yeah. after, I was talking to my dad. He was like, man, like, you realize how big that guy was? You would have got your teeth <laughs> like, flattened. So then, I guess that, like, right after that, my dad was going to get coffee with Scott Walker. And Scott introduced my dad to Hanley. <laughs> oh jeez! And, and Hanley, I guess, like, oh, your son's a little guy. He's like, yeah, I like him. He's got a little fiery spirit. <laughs> you want to hop in the Mem Cup? Oh, I miss that. Oh yeah, what was that like? Tell us what it was like. Hey, it says you it says you technically have a game in the Mem Cup, eh? Yeah, I warmed up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> warmed up in in front of uh, ten thousand fans. It was pretty fucked. <laughs> We saw that uh, uh, 519 of you holding it in that your backyard yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, that's the OHL like, Cup keep. Oh. Yeah. Rookie. Yeah. My bad. So you win the OHL <laughs> and then you go to the Mem Cup. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, so, tell us what it was like. Well, after I finished with Red Hawks, like, we got beat out, like, first round. That's when I started, like, actually, like, full-time with the team. So I'd go up, like, every day and practice and whatever um, and sit every game and watch every game. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was just crazy. Like the even the playoffs, like we were down three zero to London, came back, then we went down. Who was it next? We went down to Sag. We went down to Ottawa. Like it was ridiculous. We went down every series at least two to zero, and then came back and won. So then that was crazy. That the night, and then uh, yeah, basically we just chartered a plane. So we ba- we walked, we bust to the airport and walked straight on the plane. Jeez. That's sick. Flew straight to Halley, bust off. Um, then we had, like, obviously, like, the opening ceremonies and stuff like that. But then other than that, like, we just chilled. Like, it was pretty – there was, like, three guys. It was me, Ty Collins, and Zach Terry who, like, were there but not actually playing. So, like, we'd do, like, a skill day or something while they were, like, sleeping before a game or something like that. But, yeah, it was just crazy, like, how many fans there were and just – the teams were so good. Like, it was awesome. Was that held? Where was it? Halifax. Oh, okay. Or not Halifax, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was in Halifax. Yeah. Halifax? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so nice there, too, though. But, like, did you really feel part of that, that run? Like, that was a crazy run. Like, they're going through that on Instagram yeah. right now, right? Yeah. Like, it was – obviously, like, I I want to think I was an influence of it, what yeah. happened, but as much as it, like – Obviously, I'd battle in practice and stuff like that because, like, yeah. my season was over, so, like, I was pretty healthy. But um, I think it was just sweet to, like, even know some of those guys. Like, Nick Suzuki. 
Yeah, like, he's, in, he's in the NHL this year. Yeah, yeah he's mm-hmm. like going up for top rookie of the year. He had like 36 goals or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like like just cool like to see those guys and see like what I have to do to get to where they are. Like Suzuki, mm-hmm. like just watch him. In, I just I would just sit there and watch him in practice. It was just crazy how skilled he was. Like they'd he'd run a PK and he'd be it looked like he was on the power play. Like he'd have the puck the whole time. No one could get him from him. Wow. He was that much better. Like I watched him like, a couple alive a couple times and like he was good, but I didn't think he was like that like man, unreal. He had forty two points in the playoffs. Jeez. Yeah, like it was ridiculous. Wow. Yeah, it is crazy. Yeah. But like even like if you look at the whole team, like I bet you five of them will be in the NHL at least. Yeah. Like Suzuki, Ratcliffe, and Whistle. And like there was three from the World Juniors. And Sam Marukov, right? Sam Marukov, Jersey. It was it was just crazy to name like the team. Like Yeah, that is pretty sweet. Mm. Yeah. I got a ring out of it, so Oh you did. Yeah, right? true. <laughs> we need that picture of you hoisting the cup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be the picture we post. That party was fun too. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I remember you talking yeah. about that after. <laughs> yeah. At school. After. You can come to school for like four days. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, I missed like that was probably the worst part coming back. Oh, you were missed. gone for months. Oh yeah. <laughs> I missed, like back. two full weeks of school. So good thing I went to Victus. Yeah. <laughs> Great school. Sure. It is a good school. It's just it is they're school. reasonable. They know like very flexible when Ben is yeah. in the Mem Cup. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That. All right. First goal. Yeah. Let's go into first goal here. Okay. Um, we saw the video. It was pretty sweet. <laughs> it was against Owen yeah, Sound. Yeah, a ripper. Owen Sound. Yeah. He was like 2 0, 3 0. And then just. Yeah. I didn't even really like. Like, it was one of those moments that's like so awesome you can barely remember it. You know what I mean? You kind of black out. It's kind of like black out. Like. <laughs> I was just like, because I played 13 games the year before and like I was killing myself trying to get a goal. And then this year I went like, in, I think it was like 15 games until I scored my first one. So it was just tough, obviously, going that long without scoring a goal. But um, yeah, I think I stole the puck off someone and went on a two on one and then ripped it post and in Fireside, I think it was. Yeah, Fireside. Yeah. And then I just went crazy. I was so yeah. hot. Yeah. Was, yeah. Was yeah. It felt so great. Like, uh, just that hit that milestone. And then I only scored like three others the rest of the year. Well, so. It must have been such a relief, though. Like, was the nuts? Yeah. Such a relief? Yeah. Uh, it was definitely a big monkey off my back, for sure. Yeah. Like, I, like even, it's not the same thing, but even, like, going into junior C where I was playing, like, I was just, like, get the first goal, get the first goal, and then yeah, like, can't, like, get, the, can't get the first goal. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> like when yeah, I, you, you struggled in junior B. I remember that, oh, getting yeah. the first goal. When I played Red Ox, I think I was, like, same thing, like, 13 games. First goal was an empty netter. <laughs> yeah, I, I, remember, I remember you, like, jumped into the boards and shit. Oh, right? yeah. I was, <laughs> I was about to dread yeah, and shoot the arrow into the body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's it, hilarious. It, it took me so long. Junior B was so fun, though. Yeah, I believe it. That's a good time. All rookie team looking at the looking at the stats. <laughs> Don't look at this year's stats. Oh, we have no. You had two. Did you? Didn't you have two snizzes in London? I no. <laughs> I had won. one. I had one yeah. that was nice, and then the next one, I don't, like the goalie was out, and then that backdoor tapping. But oh, but the one I, <laughs> I saw it online, and I was like, geez. I had two shorthanded goals this year, actually. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Solid. Nice man. dash for it. The... Dash for it. Yeah. Okay, it's tough. I'm playing third and fourth line all year. Yeah. Well, even, like, talking to Sikic, like, I, I talked to him the other day, like, it's tough, like, jumping into a new league, and then, like, you... it's hard to get your confidence up at right, yeah. times, right? Like, Yeah. And it's tough, obviously, because, like, we wanted to win games, so like we're not gonna run four lines the whole game. So if yeah. you do, if you are on the fourth line that game, like you you would sit, you'd go on and then sit for like mate, like max ten minutes and then get back on. So like imagine sitting cold legs and then getting put back on into the OHL. Like it's 
it's pretty tough. Yeah, and like feeling yeah. the game and everything too, right? Like yeah. you gotta be able to feel the game a little bit. Just it, yeah. Just it out. Just kind of like what you're yeah. saying there. It took you quite a bit to get that goal. Like, what what was going through your head to like? Because sometimes people want to give up in those situations. Like, this is not gonna happen. It's taking forever. Yeah. Like, what what kind of motivated you to keep going there? I think the biggest thing for me was just to forget about it. Like I was putting so much stress on it that it was just like everything I was thinking about and everything I was doing was to score when really I just need to do the right things and then the goal would come. So I think it was like, it took me like 10 games to finally figure out like, Hey, like just relax and play your game. Yeah. And then the goal would come. So I think that's just the biggest thing for me. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. This just popped in my mind, but I think it's time. This is gonna come like what? this is the most random story, Carlos. <laughs> Gotta <laughs> be told. Be told. Yeah. Had to be told. <laughs> so as you know, we were with the legendary Jack McFarlane on New Year's Eve. Oh no! Oh, I the... you said <laughs> that. Yeah, I was sitting. No, but you, this is the funny story. So Keith and him and uh, Jack's Ben's older brother. For everyone listening, he's oh, what, 22. Yeah. Okay, so Keith comes, he's, he's before Jack. Keith gets, he's went shopping in Buffalo, right? You said you went shopping in yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, I went to go pick up some new shirts and stuff. So he comes home, he's like, he's he's there, he's like, this is like the sickest shirt. Like, it's, I found it in Buffalo. Like, I don't know else is going to have this, it. This is told like, to everyone. Oh, no. <laughs> it's unique. Jack had it. Oh. Yeah. Jack walks in like 10 minutes later with the same shirt. Same yeah, shirt. Like, we got the picture. There's the picture. <laughs> Where did Jack get it? I don't know. I don't know. He don't probably know. got it like a <laughs> store yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, like a winners or something. <laughs> yeah, like, this is That's hilarious. And then Keith and Jack were best buds ever since. Yeah. Then. <laughs> so funny. He's back home now, so he was living in Ottawa, but he's I think he's back for good now. Yeah. Yeah, what you were on a bus? Weren't you on a you were on a bus coming home from somewhere far? Weren't you? Yeah, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, those bus trips were. Yeah, were how like, bad were those? Really long. Well, like, being a rookie, percent. like being a rookie, you have to like. There's a lot of us, so you had to double up. So like, you'd be going like to Ottawa, and you'd be double up with someone. Yeah, that's so it's like so a seven-hour bus ride or like Sioux or something. So it was pretty tough. And even like going to the bathroom on the bus, you had, you had to beat three guys in a row in rock paper scissors. <laughs> <We're just fun. laughs> yeah, so that that's that sucks. Is, you'd be fucking <laughs> jumping up and down because you had to piss so bad, and you're losing <laughs> rock paper scissors. <laughs> rock paper scissors. <laughs> you play too many games in a row, like losing, and you have to take like a twenty-minute break too. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you won't have to deal with that anymore. No, I hope. Not. Well, it's, that is. I haven't finished the season yet, so I should still be a rookie. <laughs> no, nope, no. Nope. This season got cut four games, so I don't know. Yeah, what was that like? We should talk about that actually. Yeah, that was crazy. It went from everything was okay, like we were at school, to seeing a tweet about NHL being camp or like postponed. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as that happened, like we all met in the lunchroom, like we just left class and we're like, this is fucked up. Like this, if the NHL's like, we would usually follow whatever the NHL is doing. Yeah. So we knew right there that, so we went to the rink and then we basically, our coach, they were going to come up with like an announcement at three or something about like what we were doing. So then uh, he sent us home thinking like that he was just going to text us and then made us come all the way back. <laughs> At like five o'clock, finally he got the, like what we were doing, and then he just basically said it's postponed, and they don't know when it will start again. And then we went home. I packed all my shit, came home, and then figured out it was canceled. And then now I have like I didn't bring everything because I thought it was going to be like two weeks or something. Like I didn't think it was going to be that bad. And then so I still have shit in Guelph that I can't even pick up. So it's tough. Yeah, though. tough. Everyone here is out of school and shit too. Like. Yeah. The online well, everyone everywhere is out of school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the online school is just like, I hate it. Yeah. Terrible. No, no yeah, more. I hate it too. 
yeah, I have no clue what's going on right now. Yeah, I don't know. It's Hopefully, it's not going to summer though. Like, I, like it's gonna be tough for everyone, especially like, like obviously it's gonna be tough for me, but like, new guys that just got drafted coming into camp that haven't been on the ice all summer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Bad. Like that's gonna be pretty tough. And you're not how, you're not gonna be able to go to the beach anymore, Benny. That's like your thing. <laughs> No bridge this summer. <laughs> For you guys, Benny, every day in the summer skate. <laughs> every day. Every time there's a skate. The summer skate. He goes, there's two dressing rooms, right? He'll go in his and the other one will be like, hey, who wants to go to the beach? Who wants to go <laughs> every day? He's your bridge jumping. Hey, bro, well, when you drive a Jeep, that's what you do. You just figure out yep. places to go in oh, the yeah. roof. Yep. Then all I see there is later on the day on his story, he's at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest awesome. lady pickup, bro. You just say you have a Jeep and you have the t- top off. You want to come for a drive? <laughs> Instant. Jeez. I got to take notes. So. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> writing that down right now. <laughs> He's like, how to buy a Jeep cheap? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, go on YouTube how to Jeep. Jeep. not cheap at all. Jeep no, could you actually cheap. give me yours after you're done with it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, like, two thousand, like, I was looking at it like... Like even like a two thousand and five would still be like ten grand. Oh, really? They hold their value. Why do you like still. Jeep so much? I love Jeep. Mean? What do you? Why don't you like Jeep? Yeah, I Jeep wouldn't get a Jeep personally. Some... Better question. You yeah, but then also. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Oh, but then also when you get awesome. when you get the Jeep, the f- gas on it is like ridiculous. It's like an eighty dollars. Oh, Right now it's good because the gas prices, but like it's an eighty dollar fill, and I get like four hundred kilometers out of it. Yeah. Maybe not. Even. <laughs> hey, should should have played for the London Knights. <laughs> <laughs> Why that? Hey, have you have you listened to Spin Chicklets and they just rip the London Knights? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, they do it like yeah, it's about the under the under table shit. Yeah, the under the table stuff. Oh, and, the spin, and the Spin Chicklets always make jokes about it, and then they like yeah. the hundred brothers like talks and like you can't be doing this. <laughs> It's hilarious. Yeah. How much do you guys get paid a week? Like, what's the OHL regulation? It's a month. You get four seventy. That's not terrible. I guess if you're yeah, paying for all your hockey and stuff. Yeah. So like four fifty goes to the Jeep, and then I get like twenty bucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I, then, what about like your billets and shit? Uh, I think the billets get like a hundred and ten. Like, because don't they pay for all your food at home and stuff? Yeah, that's why I I don't know the exact number, but they get a certain number for like that stuff, like food and like the hydro bill and shit. Yeah, because like you that's don't cool. you don't like you don't have to pay for really any food, do you? No, unless yeah, I want to so... go broke. But oh my god, we went to keg so much this year. Actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why? We go to the keg and we get a Billy Miner and a pop. Oh, so oh man, so good then. With who's money? <laughs> With the money that you get from the paycheck i literally spent <laughs> all of my money this year on gas and Billy miners that is sweet it's oh so but the Billy miners are like they're like eight bucks then Slam. you get a pop for like three bucks and then you get to watch the game and the waitresses are pretty good looking too so it's like a, <laughs> and you, tell them, you tell them you're in the old <laughs> hey, what well, doesn't work when you got Cam Hillis who's drafted third round sitting beside you? Then they're just like, who the fuck is this guy? And they're just like, yeah, and he's actually old enough too. <laughs> yeah, and he's actually old enough. So. <laughs> That's so uh, Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to look nineteen. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. It is. Yeah, your brother does not look twenty-two. I know. No, <laughs> I know. You just see Sammy. Oh, yeah. I saw a picture. Yeah. Like, none of you yeah. guys look. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I know. Okay, boys. I think that might be it. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. That was a great, great little interview. Hope to have you back sometime. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We'll yeah. yeah, yeah thanks, for us. Yeah. We've got to get a part two with John. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, John, just roast we'll by the guys on. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Just go at it. Yeah. All right. Thanks again. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. See you next time.